An Alberta daycare owner there today telling CTV News why her centre was closed this morning, along with dozens of others in the province, launching rolling closures in protest of the federal provincial $10 a day child care program. The Association of Alberta Child Care Entrepreneurs says the structure of Canada's national program in their province is putting too much strain on operators. In a statement, the association writes in part, this program in its current state places an unsustainable strain on the child care industry's ability to serve Alberta families effectively. The closures, the statement goes on to say, symbolize a stand against policies that risk creating divides among children and potentially harming their social and emotional development. In Ontario, the YMCA, which runs about 20% of official child care spots, is asking the provinces, for, sorry, asking the federal government and the province for more cash to run its subsidized programs. The minister who oversees the agreement with the provinces is with me live in studio now. Jenna Suds is the Minister of Families, Children and Social Development. Hi, Minister. Good to have you here. Pleasure. Thanks I, for having me. I appreciate you making the time. Have you had any conversations, let's start in Alberta, with your counterpart there, about ending what you know is a big disruption for for parents mm -hmm. in the province. Uh, so absolutely, and first of all, I would say my heart goes out to those parents who've had this disruption today and have the stress of having to deal with this. Um, you know, I think from the get go, our goal in building this nationwide early learning and child care system is to ensure that parents can rely mm -hmm. on this child care. It's high quality. It's inclusive, accessible, affordable. And, you know, I would say that to date we've seen remarkable progress, you know, across the country. Every province and territory has already reduced fees by at least 50 percent, uh, if not to $10 a day. Uh, so I think there's a, there is a commitment, um, not only that we've demonstrated by making this $30 billion investment, but also through the province and province and territories, excuse me, who have also all signed on. So, so let me explore a little bit about the mechanics of how that's working. And to disclose to everyone watching, I have a kid in one of these daycares <laughs> in Ontario. I can only put myself in the shoes of the parents in Alberta today who sure. didn't have care for their kids and and know very intimately how how big of a deal that mm -hmm. would be. Um, there seems to be some, you know area of gray in between the federal government's idea of how this will work and how the provinces are, are seeing it work. In essence, what these operators are saying is, we're not getting enough money through this to cover our costs because they have escalated, and the money we're getting to make up the difference, let's say with $10 mm -hmm. a day or $15 a day, is only equivalent to the fees we charged in back in March of, mm -hmm. of 2022. Is that on the province in your view, or is there a role for the federal government to step up here as well? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the way that this has rolled out rather simplistically is that each province and territory has an agreement with the federal government. Uh, in the case of Alberta, as an example, it's $3.8 billion over five years. They have certainty what that looks like. Each year they know what the payment's going to be, and it increases each of those five years. Uh, they know, for example, again, using Alberta as an example, the expectation is to create 68,000 new spaces. So when they signed on to these agreements, they knew exactly the dollars that were coming to them and exactly what the expectations and metrics were. So uh, from my vantage point, uh, it's very clear. Uh, the provinces have always been funding uh, early learning and child care. Uh, however, they saw the value in moving forward and building this national system as well. We came to terms on an agreement and we've moved forward. Do you concede, though, when that agreement was struck, uh, the rate with which the cost of living has increased was not yet in full view? For example, in Ontario, I think the amount it raises, it, it rises each year is about 2.1%. Clearly, inflation has far outpaced that. The daycare operators are saying our costs have escalated at a rate mm -hmm. they hadn't previously. Um, do you concede that that is possible and that the, the provincial money that was in place, you know, needs to be subsidized by more federal money? Uh, I wouldn't concede that it needs to be subsidized by more federal money. And, and case in point, uh, I'll move to Ontario as, as the example uh, just raised. Uh, you know, there's a funding agreement in place and there are increments each year of, under which it increases. So you use the example of the 2.1% increase in funding to the operators that the province has offered operators. Well, I can tell you that the increase in funding over the last year to Ontario was over 17%. Now, it is up to the province how they manage 
um, how they fund and what that funding formula looks like in their territory. So Ontario has chosen to increase funding uh, by 2.1% this year uh, to their operators, all the while working on a more permanent funding formula. And this is really the crux of the issue, at least here in Ontario, and I would say the same of, uh, in Alberta, is getting that funding formula right. And those provinces have not uh, nailed that yet, if you will. It is not written in stone. So these operators don't have certainty. They can't, uh, you know, they, they can't predict exactly what this is going to look like. And as you've said, as the model currently exists, in many cases, they're not being able to recoup all those costs. And so I, I push back to the provinces and, and the operators to do the work to get that funding formula right. Do you, so, so, so if I interpret that correctly, you're saying that the provinces are, are, should be putting more money on the table to address the needs of the operators and that you're not willing to? Uh, we have a five-year term uh, that we've currently agreed, the $30 billion. There are, there are no additional dollars coming. Uh, to be candid, I, the provinces know that. Um, and, and I would suggest, you know, historically, the provinces have stepped up and the provinces have responsibility for childcare. When they came to the table back in 2021 and, and signed the agreements, which are now in place, they did so because they also expressed a desire to create this system, to be able to offer this high quality, affordable care to families but, in their but province. But with great respect, Minister, hasn't your government made it a cross jurisdictional issue? You stepped into the space, mm -hmm. you want to be the leader, you wanted to create $10 a day daycare, you were explicit, your government was explicit mm -hmm. about that. You have dictated essentially the bottom line of this agreement. Isn't it somewhat incumbent on you if a province says, we need help to kind of reflect or respond to how the situation has changed. 2021 is a long time ago when it comes to the cost of living. Yeah, respectfully, and, and I, I would say, you know, I continue to engage uh, with my counterparts and there's great dialogue always happening. Sharing of best practices amongst provinces. We meet on a regular basis. So there is a lot of work that happens ongoing to ensure that we're setting the provinces up with the support and the success that we would like to see and why building are all these daycares system. closing? Uh, well, again, I would suggest there's a lot of work to be done um, in some of the provinces uh, to nail the funding formula, frankly. And I would push back as well, Vashi. In Alberta, um, just last year, they lapsed half of the funding. They did not spend half of the funding that we sent to them. So, you know, again, this is not easy. It's not easy to build a national child care system overnight. It won't happen. There are challenges. We're willing to work with the provinces and territories because ultimately this is about the families. This is about ensuring families have access to affordable, high quality care. I want to ask on this question of access, if there is more thought about any changes to the program moving forward, because some of this d data that's come from Statistics Canada is, is especially pertinent in that respect. For example, they found that while things have gotten more affordable mm -hmm. for parents who can access care, accessing it is harder than it was prior to the introduction of your program. So uh, the number of parents who used childcare and reported having difficulty found an increase from, uh, and finding it, pardon me, from 36% in 2019 to 49% in 2023. That's mm -hmm. a big jump. I think anecdotally, we all know of people who are stuck on waiting lists, who find it really hard to access this affordable care that has become such a hallmark of your government. Uh, is there any thought, I know that part of it was 250,000 new spaces. Yeah. The latest I read was somewhere around 80, 82,000 have been Correct. created. Is there a plan to accelerate that in mm -hmm. order to make sure that fewer parents are having such a hard time? Yeah, absolutely. And, and your numbers were correct. So most recently uh, we shared that there's been 82,000 spaces announced across the country over the last two years. The goal is to get to 250,000. The work that is underway with each province and territory is what, uh, what plan they have in place to create those spaces. Each province has a, has a target. I referenced earlier 86,000 for Alberta. They're at roughly 9,000 now. Um, as part of their agreement with us, they are required to submit annual reports, uh, action plans that will lay out those details 
to ensure that those spaces are created. Of course, there's metrics attached to the funding that goes to the provinces, and they've committed so is that to these numbers. Eval evaluated annually, for, annually, pardon me, for example, if in a year there's still only 9,000 spaces, are you going to hold money back? Uh, well, I don't want to negotiate in public but necessarily, the deal's already signed. but I'm just there's, asking. there are uh, parameters, of course, in our agreement of when funding is released to each province and territory, and there's metrics attached with them. Considering the numbers, as I detailed from Statistics Canada, is there any thought to the federal government contributing uh, a greater degree to pushing that number even beyond 250,000, mm -hmm. that there is a greater need than maybe you first assessed there would be in 2021, given how many parents are finding it yeah. even harder to find spaces. Yeah, and we've heard some of that feedback, frankly, from parents as, as I'm out and about, and provinces, of course, sharing, stakeholders sharing. And uh, of course, we are here to support this system and ensure it's a success for families. Um, having said that, uh, our agreements with the provinces and territories uh, will end 2025, 26. Uh, so the work it will begin soon on renegotiating what those need to look like for the next five years. But in the meantime, for parents who are struggling right now, that sounds to me like there's nothing more on the table. Uh, I, I would uh, disagree with that. And I disagree because of the work that's happening currently. The funding is in place. For yeah, no, I'm spaces. saying beyond what's already agreed to, it mm -hmm. doesn't sound like you're entertaining the possibility of creating even more spaces beyond that. I, I think that will be the next round of negotiations, absolutely. And are you worried about that failing to address the... Uh, the sort of level of need that exists right now, given, again, what I laid out, that there's, you know, a 13% jump in four mm -hmm. years in the number of people who are finding it hard to find a spot? Mm -hmm. Well, I think one of the important points about that is the need to support the workforce. We haven't talked about that yet, but as, of course, the price for uh, early learning and childcare is decreasing across the country, the demand, of course, has increased. Um, but we need the workforce as well to grow, to be able to accommodate this increased demand. So again, there's initiatives uh, across the country, uh, working with colleges, universities, et cetera, to try to ensure that we're supporting and growing that workforce. And it's really important that we continue that work with the provinces and territories to ensure that those spaces can be supported with a well-educated uh, workforce that's, you know, ready to, to take our children into their care. Okay, I'm out of time, Minister. I have to leave it there. I appreciate your time this evening. Thank you.